This video is sponsored by Skillshare. April 18th marked the digital release of Matt Reeves' The Batman on HBO Max. The powers that be at Warner will no doubt hope that the movie will find a second life and grow an audience there, because while the 700 million plus box office might look impressive at first glance, the executives at Warner, both those that were already there, as well as the new ones which came in with the Discovery merger, see this number as a disappointment. Since they see the box office numbers as disappointing, that by extension mean they also see the movie as disappointing, which will have ramifications for future installments of the Batman franchise. In this video, we will break down exactly why they see a $700 million plus box office as disappointing, what that alone will mean for the proverbial sequels, and finally, how the Batman is indicative of the magnitude of the cleanup job new boss David Saslaw of Discovery fame has in front of him. In short, a very clear vision and creative direction went into creating the Batman. But in order for the franchise to thrive, the next challenge for the creatives will be to take the feedback from the audience and executives on board and fine-tune their vision accordingly, as no creative endeavor is made in a vacuum. And that takes us neatly to Skillshare, this video sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives which enables you to deepen existing passions as well as to pick up new skills. Whether you want to get better at a hobby or engage in a new career, Skillshare offers classes in topics such as music, photography, all aspects of film and video production, creative writing, and much, much more. From search engine optimization to video editing, Skillshare has classes that certainly helped us up our game as professional YouTubers. And if being a YouTuber is something you want to try out but don't know where to begin, then look no further than the 15 invaluable lessons in the class from clueless to content creator. Make engaging videos that attract an audience with Aaron Palabiab. But say you need something more specialized on this or any other topic then all you have to do is search and you shall find, as new premium classes are launched every week. Since Skillshare sponsors our video, we naturally have a deal for you. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description, or to use our code Midnight's Edge, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, so you can explore your creativity. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring, and with that, let's begin by going through the source claiming Warner were less than enthusiastic about the Batman's box office. The source behind the claim that Warner were disappointed by the Batman's box office is none other than Mikey Sutton of Geekosity magazine fame. More or less every scoop of his that we have chosen to cover in the last couple of years has come to pass. Most recently his claim that David Saslaw would restructure Warner's DC on film operation in the image of Marvel Studios, something we published on April 9th, only for Variety to confirm it not one week later on April 14th. The source behind Warner being disappointed by the Batman box office then is a Geekosity article authored by Joe Lynn Francisco and Mikey Sutton himself, coincidentally also published on April 14th. Before we start breaking down the main points of the article, I want to further elaborate on some of the background context. Spider-Man No Way Home has pulled in $1.9 billion at the global box office, of which 800 million were in North America alone. Even pre-pandemic, numbers like that were beyond anyone's wildest expectations, and they demonstrate that for the right crowd pleaser, audiences will show up en masse and for repeat viewings, because no movie gets to numbers like that without repeat viewings and lots of them. What that means is that the pandemic excuse is no longer valid, and pre-pandemic box office comparisons are fair. With that established, first consider Batman v Superman. 
That movie only came about because Warner were disappointed that Man of Steel didn't hit a billion at the box office, so they brought out the big gun with Batman, and mandated Zack Snyder to conjure up a Batman v Superman movie instead of Man of Steel Part 2, which is what he had planned. When Batman v Superman only grossed what they considered a very disappointing 870 million, their panicked hypercorrection still reverberates through all things DC on film to this day. Then consider The Joker. Despite its R rating and exceedingly gritty tone, it did cross 1 billion at the box office, and albeit by a hair's breadth, it even outgrossed Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Put all of that together and mix it in with Spider-Man No Way Home reaching nearly 2 billion and you'll see that the expectation was for the Batman to not only cross 1 billion at the box office but to do so with a wide margin. Granted, it would be released on HBO Max after 45 days, but if it had the right word of mouth, 45 days worth of exclusive theatrical release should still be plenty of time to fly past a billion. As it turned out, The Batman didn't fly past a billion. Worse yet, it didn't even come close to Batman v Superman numbers, and that hurt. Then it doesn't help how favorable the reviews may have been. To be clear, the movie did not flop, but it also did not do what the studio expected and needed it to do. Keep in mind, Spider-Man No Way Home was a 2021 release. Kikosity writes, At the moment, The Batman is the movie to beat for the top box office rank for the year 2022. Nevertheless, insiders predict Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness will knock it off its throne this summer. Sources revealed director Matt Reeves will need to make artistic changes for the sequel. The article doesn't state what that means, but we do have some idea, because after it was published, Mikey Sutton himself appeared on Midnight's Edge After Dark. Apparently, the movie's dark tone was a point of complaint, even if fans may have been pleased. Warner believes the rating and word of mouth scared off families, which means parents overlooked the Batman merchandise for their kids, and for Batman in particular, merchandise is a big deal. Since family audiences helped propel Spider-Man to nearly 2 billion, you can expect Warner to pressure Matt Reeves into not just cutting the running time a bit, but lightening the tone for the next movie as well, just like they did after Batman Returns. You all know how that turned out, so let's hope someone learned those lessons. The article then goes on to make a rather intriguing remark regarding Pattinson. Although Robert Pattinson delivered a convincing Batman, he didn't bring in the female crowd. That's ironic, because Warner Brothers expected Twilight fans to reel in more women viewers. Here, I would like to interject that it's more than just ironic. It is also frustrating, because the whole reason the studio mandated director Matt Reeves to go with Robert Pattinson over Nicholas Holt who reportedly was Matt Reeves' choice for the role, was because of the assumption that Pattinson would bring in the female Twilight crowd. You can argue how great an actor Pattinson is and point out the lighthouse till the cows come home, but at the end of the day, bringing in the Twilight audience is why he was cast. Just to make sure they would get all of them, there were even rumors that they wanted Kristen Stewart for Catwoman. Of course, had they done that, they might as well have ditched Matt Reeves and hired Rupert Sanders to direct instead, for the perfect behind-the-scenes love triangle reunion. <laughs> but on that note, Sutton also suggested that Zoe Kravitz's screen time may be increased next time around, as it was felt she and Pattinson didn't have enough chemistry in this movie, so the hope is that more scenes together can solve that next time out. Anyway, by casting Robert Pattinson, they turned off a goodly portion of the built-in Batman audience. And if the Twilight crowd didn't come in to offset them, then in retrospect, casting Pattinson in the first place turned out to be a pretty questionable decision. That Twilight digression aside, the article continues. A source observed, the Batman isn't a crowd pleaser. It's too long and not a film people want to see over and over and over again. 
The movie has paved the way for a new universe of DC characters en route to HBO Max. The Batman spun off two shows, one about the Penguin and the other about Arkham Asylum. Reeves created this dark detective universe for The Batman. As a universe is always expanding, The Batman has a lot of room for spin-off series and theatrical sequel development. But The Batman lives in a pocket universe. He won't meet Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman or Jason Momoa's Aquaman. Insider says that hurts it too. And that's exactly right. With The Batman, the previous Hamada, Emmerich and Sarnoff administration which greenlit it, in effect found a way to undermine their own brand as they inadvertently created a competing DC cinematic universe to rival the one they already got going. That's not how you manage a brand. In the April 14th Variety article detailing how David Sasla will restructure Warner's DC operation into its own studio, it said, The move would potentially affect DC feature film development in the Warner Brothers Pictures Group, streaming series at Warner Brothers Television, and the creative arm within DC proper, all in an effort to have the disparate elements more closely aligned in order to maximize the value of the superhero stable, one often seen as punching up against Marvel. Insiders say that Saslaw believes that the success of the merger, one that has left the company highly leveraged, will rest in no small part on unlocking the full potential of the DC Comics universe of characters. Discovery insiders believe that although DC has achieved cinematic success with recent films such as Aquaman and The Batman, it lacks a coherent creative and brand strategy. Well, ain't that the truth. Discovery believes that several top-shelf characters such as Superman have been left to languish and need to be revitalized. They also believe that projects like Todd Phillips' Joker are a shining example of how second-built characters from the DC library can and should be exploited. Zastlaw has pledged to find $3 billion worth of synergies in the newly merged company, a signal of how important cost-cutting will be to Warner's new owners. So, if you're working for Warner Media, now would be a good time to update your resume. Might come in handy. Anyway, the article continues. Mining DC's library of characters could help control spending, as Warner Brothers Discovery owns the underlying intellectual property, insiders say. In other words, for Discovery, DC is the highest priority when it comes to entertainment brands, and one of the highest priorities of the merger as a whole. Both the Batman 2 and the Penguin spin-off series will happen, but going forward, a more unified strategy appears to be on the cards for DC on film. How do you think they plan on executing that? And were you disappointed the Batman didn't reach that coveted $1 billion box office? Let us know in the comments, and before you go, if you feel inspired, remember to click the link in the description, or use our code MIDNIGHTSEDGE, so you can be among the 1000 to get a 1 month free trial of premium Skillshare membership.